Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you know that this is my series in which I use tarot and oracle cards to explore topics related to living the intentional life. And this week, I'm reminded of something that one of my favorite teachers, Colette Baron reed says from time to time. Well, she warns us against having life pasted to the ends of our noses. Isn't that an interesting image? Having life pasted to the end of your nose. What would that experience be like? Would we be able to see the broad view, to get an idea of the direction clearly, the direction that we are moving in? Or would we be drowning in details, buried in minutia? The idea of having life pasted to the ends of our noses indicates a time, which I've experienced, and I'm sure you have probably experienced too, where you get so buried in the details that we can't pull back and see where we are and where we're going. Now, those details, that minutia, can often be beneficial to us, can even be inspiring or exciting or intriguing, if nothing else. But if that's all that we're perceiving is this problem and that problem and that moment and this moment, without seeing the breadth of our experience, we are cutting ourselves off and we're not being fully present to the experience of our lives. Being able to pull back, being able to get a bird's eye view is very helpful. It helps to clear our vision and allows us to see more clearly, more truthfully, the direction that we are going in. And that's what this week's Tarot and Oracle spread is trying to remind us of, I believe. So, we have a wonderful spread already laid out. Let me show it to you. This is a beautiful spread, isn't it? You know that I say that every week, don't you? <laughs> but I believe that all of these spreads are beautiful and unique and have their own particular effervescent quality about them. And so, this spread. Um, these decks are lovely, and if you're interested in these decks, as usual, there will be a clip at the end of the video which gives you the names of the decks and the creators, and in the description box below there will be information and links that you can use to go explore these decks and perhaps buy one or all of them if you want. Now remember, I do not get any financial remuneration if you use those links. They're just for your, your ease and your comfort and your convenience. That's the word I was looking for, convenience. Um, so go check them out. We just saw the spread. Again, beautiful spread. And if this is your first time here, let me give you a brief overview. There are three oracle cards in the center, and those oracle cards give us the main theme, the thesis statement for this essay of a spread. And then around those three cards, there were four groups of cards which have one inquiry card, a card with a question on it. And each one of those questions was answered by one card from two different tarot decks. So that's the way we're going to work through this spread together, from the oracle cards, then around to the questions and the answers to those questions. So friends, let's take a look at the oracle cards. So friends, we had those three oracle cards from left to right. You saw Discovering Truth, View from Above, and Rejuvenating Rain. Lovely cards. And um, did you notice that the two cards on the right, the figures, the people in those two cards were facing each other? And that is one indication for me that these two cards are in relation to each other. 
the get the big picture and clear the um, I'm sorry, view from above and uh, rejuvenating rain are in relation. And I think the if we think of these three cards as the thesis statement for this spread, the main point for the thesis statement of the spread, now the 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 center of the center, if you will, is between those two cards on the right, between view from above and rejuvenating rain. And I think that neither actually dominates the other. They are both to be held in balance with each other. And what, what can we draw from those two cards in balance with each other? So let's begin with view from above. View from above. The little, the quote or the, the thing in quotes at the bottom of it said, get the big picture. View from above, get the big picture. And this is a card to remind us not to get bogged down in the details. Now, the details, as we just mentioned, can be fun, can be exciting. They can be the spice of life, if you will. But remember, you don't just eat the spice. There needs to be a main dish that the spice goes in or is sprinkled upon. Yeah, it's the main dish that is the main dish. The spice is just the spice. And the details are just the spice of our lives. And if we're just looking at the spice and not getting the main picture, we're cutting ourselves off from most of our lives. So this card is here to remind us not to get bogged down in the details. Check in with them, sure, because they can be interesting. They can give us information. They can steer us in one direction or another. However, the details are not the meat or the potatoes or the vegetables or whatever your main course looks like. No? So, don't get bogged down in the details. Instead, get the big picture. Get a bird's eye view. Yeah? Rise up above the day-to-day -day variations of our lives. Be able to rise up and see broadly. See deeply. See breadth and depth rather than just what's here in front of our faces. Because that can be where our inspiration and our sustenance can come from. Now, the flavor can come from the details, but the sustenance, the depth and breadth of our lives comes from that broader view. So, we're reminded to remember the full journey rather than each step. We live in each step. Because each step... Each moment is the only thing that exists. The last step has faded into memory and no longer exists, besides our memory of it, which isn't the same as the actual step that we took. Yeah? We only remember bits and pieces of the past. We don't remember the fullness of the truth of the past. That's impossible. And it doesn't exist. The next step is only our imagination. And it's not certain because there is no certain future. The only thing that exists is the step we are taking now, certainly. However, however, we can rise up and get a perspective of where we have come from and where we are headed. And remembering that, yes, we live in the moment with each step, as a mindfulness practice, for example. However, we want to see the breadth of where we have been and where we are going. Allowing for variation, allowing for change of the direction that we are headed in. Rather than the moment-by-moment -moment events. Again, remembering that that doesn't mean that we ignore the moment-by-moment -moment events. Because those are the only things that exist. However, having the ability to rise and see breadth as well is crucial to living an intentional life. The ups and downs can be exciting or they can be burdensome for us. When you think of the ups and downs of your day-to-day -day life, 
what does that stir in you? What emotional reaction do you have? Do you have one of joy and excitement? Or do you have one of, I'll go up a little bit, but I know I'm going to crash back down. That sense of pessimism, perhaps, or of ennui. How do you feel when you imagine ups and downs of life? Well, this card is here to remind us that, yes, there are going to be ups and downs in life. However, if we can rise up and get a broader perspective, we will see that even with those ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs, we are still headed in the evolutionary path. We're still headed up the hill. We're headed towards expansion. We ex Another way to think of it is we expand and we contract. And we expand and we contract. And we expand and we contract. And we expand and we contract. Like a tree growing. A tree that goes through four seasons. Expands and it contracts. But it's still growing. But if we're so focused on, I'm expanding, oh, no, I'm contracting, now I'm contracting, no, I'm expanding, now I'm expanding, no, I'm contracting, no, I'm contracting. Without seeing the bigger picture that we have evolved, that we are growing, that we are evolving, that we are expanding. We lose perspective of our lives. And we lose something else, and we'll be getting to that in just a moment. But so, one thing we want to remember is to get that broad perspective, the higher view. And dive down and get into the details, the nitty-gritty of our daily lives, certainly. But don't get stuck in it. Yeah? The higher view is also the view of the moment. Yeah? Just because we're high up and we're looking broadly doesn't mean we're not in the moment. Just because we're looking into the future of where we think we are heading and we're seeing where we have been doesn't mean we're not still in the moment. It's just a more a broader perspective. So we look from this broad perspective and we do one more thing. Well, we do many other things, but this spread is reminding us of one more thing that this deck loves to remind us of, apparently, is healing and cleansing. Yeah? The next card is Rejuvenating Rain. Rejuvenating Rain. And the quote at the bottom says, clear the past, heal the present. So you get that idea of rain washing things away for th healing to occur. Yeah? Think of a dry, parched ground with leaves and debris all cluttered on top. And then the rain comes, and the rain not only washes away the debris, but also in giving water and life to the ground, heals the cracked ground. That's what this card reminds me of when I first see it. Yeah? That refreshing rain, the rejuvenating rain. And this card is here to remind us that part of healing is cleansing. Cleansing the wounds. A wound that is not cleansed will not heal. It will stay open. One of the reasons that we clear the wounds is one, well, one of the reasons is infection, right? But if we don't clear the debris that's inside, the wound will not heal properly. It won't fully close. It needs to be clean to be able to fully close and heal and be strong again. It might leave a star, scar. But the scar is also strength. The scar is actually stronger tissue. However, that, uh, that beautiful scar will not develop properly if there's stuff still stuck in the wound. It works for our bodies. It works for our emotions. It works for our psyches. It works for our spirit. Now, our eternal nature does not get wounded. We know that. However, our human experiencing self gets wounded. 
and debris gets caught in, and we want to clear that away. So, one way to do that is to absolve ourselves and others for the debris, for those toxins that we have been carrying. When you examine your inner self, do you notice the wounds? When you notice the wounds, do you notice the toxins that still remain there? The wounds that are, have not healed over, the wounds that have not closed up and given us a stronger scar. Do we notice the toxins that are still there, the emotional toxins of anger, rage, worthlessness, weakness, um, inadequacy, uh, worry, anxiety, all of those toxins that are built up within those wounds. Until we're able to wash those wounds clean, they won't heal correctly. They won't heal well. They won't add to our strength. But when we do wash them clean, when we do allow them to heal, they add to our strength. We become stronger. We become... I don't want to see in, say impenetrable because that is not our goal. But we do become stronger. We do become stronger. And the wounds are like unami in Japanese uh, pottery. Right? There's a strength there. But there's a beauty there as well. The scars add beauty. I've got one right here. Can you see it? <laughs> it's beautiful. My scar here is beautiful. Whether you can see it or not, I know it's here. And it is now a beauty mark. Because it is it has given me more strength and it shows my experience in life. And Unami, where they he they heal. They repair pottery by not trying to erase the cracks or, or make them invisible, but make them more visible by adding gold to them. That's, those are the scars on our bodies and in our hearts, in our emotions. Those scars that heal well are the unami of our lives. So, this card is asking us to clear away the past to allow new growth. Yeah? When the ground is buried in too much debris, the little new sprouts cannot grow because they don't get sufficient sunlight, sufficient air. Yeah? Sure, having some protection is nice, but when they're buried in debris, the sprouts won't grow. So, we want to clear away the accumulated stuff. Not the toxins, that's one metaphor, but also just the accumulation of stuff. Because as we clear away the stuff, we have more room to grow. Clear out everything that doesn't serve us and doesn't support us. What are those things that you can think of that are you carry with you but do not serve or support you anymore? Are they relationships? Are there relationships that are bearing you down, weighing you down, cluttering up your mind and heart and physical space? Are there tasks that are bogging you down? Things that could be cleared away? Or is it actual stuff, like the things, the clutter in our homes? It's, this card is here to remind us to clear out our personal spaces as well. Now, I'm a hoarder. So I fall prey to this a lot. I collect stuff, not only tarot decks, which are, not, which are tools, which are tools for me and things that I use regularly, but things like rubber bands and paper. I could use this paper again somehow some, sometime later, or those twist ties on packages of bread or, or something, yeah? I'm a hoarder. I collect stuff and it's part of my DNA because my grandmother was a hoarder, my mother is a hoarder, and I've inherited the hoarding gene as well. And carrying all that stuff with us, the clothes in the closet, yeah, weigh us down and prevent us from being able to grow because we're cluttered. 
We don't have the space. We don't have the emotional space. We don't have the mental space. And we often don't have the physical space for new stuff to come in. So clear out the clutter. The physical stuff crowds our emotional and mental space as well. Because we've got to take care of it. So this card is here to remind us that water in all of its forms is cleansing. So we clear out stuff. But even if we clear out the objects, dust remains and water, we can use water to clear and cleanse our physical space. But also our tears cleanse. Have you noticed that? That tears will cleanse our hearts as well. That's a form of water cleansing our emotional space. Be they tears of joy or tears of sorrow or tears of grief or tears of surprise. Have you noticed tears cleansing your emotional space? The rain coming from above cleanses the earth. That's why I love rain. I love rain. I love going out in the rain. It's like having a new baptismal experience every time it rains, going out into the rain. And when it's acceptable for me to be partially or unclothed in the rain is a wonderful experience for me. But I don't have to be naked in the rain. Just feeling the rain on my face, I can feel that cleansing happening. I can feel the feeling of a new baptism. Yeah? The divine washing away. All of the stuff that, is, that, has, that has accumulated on my body and in my mind and in my heart. Rain is a beautiful thing. All forms of water can be cleansing. Water that we drink in our bodies. Yeah? as opposed to the water we drink outside of our bodies, but the water that we drink comes into our bodies and it cleanses our bodies as well. Water in all of its forms is very cleansing. And that's another thing we want to remember, is to cleanse and clear. Cleanse our wounds. Cleanse the accumulation of stuff. Clear away space for our growth and for our ability to rise above. That's why these two cards, I think, are so interactive. We cleanse and we're able to rise above. If we're weighed down by stuff and, and, and emotional stuff and mental stuff and physical stuff, we find it so much harder to rise up and get the broader view. So that cleansing experience is part of our ability to rise and see and experience. But also, rising and seeing and experience allows us to see where we have accumulated stuff, where we want to clear away, what needs to be cleared away, what emotional baggage we are carrying, what mental crud are we buried in, what are we bogged down in. Now, rising above allows us to see where and what needs to be cleaned, cleaned cleansed. And cleansing and clearing allows us to rise up. So these two cards in harmony are the center of this spread. Being able to see the breadth and experience the breadth of our lives, the depth of our lives, and being able to clear ourselves, our space, and cleanse ourselves, and cleanse our inner selves and outer selves, so that we can rise up and get a better picture of what needs to be cleaned. So these two cards point us in the direction of the third card, which was on the left. This card is discovering truth. And we cannot discover truth if we are, one, buried in details. If our lives are pasted to the ends of our noses, we cannot see truth. All we see is what's right in front of us, which is part of the truth, but it is not the truth. Also, we cannot see the truth if we are bogged down or weighed down by stuff. 
We need clean, clear eyes, clean, clear hearts, clean, clear spirit to be able to see and experience truth. And why is that important? Why is discerning truth important? Well, we've got this card here to teach us, it tells us that we stand in the light of truth. We are in the light of truth. It's not something we have to search out or find. We are here. We are present in the light of truth. And the only reason we cannot see the light of truth is because we got something pasted to the end of our noses or we're, we're, we need a washing. Like a really, really dirty car window that is full of dust and muck, we cannot see the light of truth that is shining down upon us. So we go through the washing process and it is revealed to us. It's been there all the time, but it's revealed to us. So when we've cleaned our space and we have risen above, we can then really listen to the soul of wisdom without needing confirmation. Now, we won't need confirmation from outside because we will hear the true voice coming from in, from within, from within our souls, from within our spirits, from our hearts. We'll be able to hear it because we've cleared out space. Not only for new things to grow, but for us to be able to really hear what is in here. And follow it. Have you ever done this? Have you ever heard the truth, gotten that intuitive hit, and then not done anything about it? I know I have. So this card is here to remind us of, yes, you are in the light of truth. You are bathed in the light of truth from within and from the divine, from without. Do something with it. Do something with it. Act on it. When we get those, that voice of wisdom rising up, we want to act on it, follow it. And to, we also want to be our authentic selves. We want to be authentic with ourselves and with others as well, but also with ourselves. And we can't really do that if, again, we've got life pasted onto our noses or we're covered in crap, emotional crap, um, psychic crap, um, mental crap. Now first we've got to wash that all away and then, be, then we can be honest with ourselves and others. We can remove the mask. And we want to speak and live the truth. Because it's in speaking and living our truth that we are following the powerful current of our intention. When we try, when we cover the truth or we hide the truth to make everybody else feel more comfortable or to protect ourselves, we're not open to the powerful flow of intention. We're not able to access the full potential power that is available to us. But if we are living our truth, when we are speaking and living our truth, we are open. And when we are open, we have access to the power. We want to follow our hearts. And we don't really hear our hearts very clearly, again, when we are buried in details or we're covered in crunk, gunk. So we follow our heart. And if we get the nudge to speak to somebody, to um, go in a certain direction, to follow somebody else, to reach out, then we can do that. And we want to do that when we are experiencing the light of our truth, because we know that those are actual true nudges from within. When we're, when we're not as clear as we can be, when we're not as perceptive as we can be, because we're buried in stuff, 
Sometimes those nudges are not coming from our inner truth, they're coming from our frightened egos, disguised as intuition. Have you ever had that happen? Those nudges of, oh no, 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 don't do that! Or, yeah! Or, Ugh. those frightened, scared, or, you gotta, 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 gotta move, gotta move, gotta move. The, the somewhat panicked or, 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 or anxious voice from within. Have we ever confused that with intuition? I know I have. I know I certainly have. It's not until that we're as open and clear as possible that we're actually hearing the real voice from within rather than the ego-created voice of anxiety, fear, depression, worthlessness, powerlessness. Those, oh, intuitive feelings. The intuitive feeling of truth from the heart will feel like openness, will feel expansive. And it might actually lead in the same direction. Yeah? The frightened voice, don't go there, might be an actual warning. It might be an actual warning. It's not the voice of our true inner heart. It's not the voice of our soul speaking, but it could be a valid warning. The true voice from within might actually have the same effect, but instead of don't go over there, it would be, let's go this way. This way is life. This way is joy. This way is love. Rather than, yeah, don't go that way. And they might both be pointing you in the same direction, but one is the true voice of the self, of truth. So, we want to follow our own path. We want to follow our own voice, and we can do that when we're bathed in the light. And others follow their paths, and we follow ours. And sometimes those paths cross, and sometimes they diverge, and we want to allow that. Allowing paths to diverge is wonderful. It's fine. It's our individual path. We don't want to drag anybody along with on our path, just as we don't want to be dragged along somebody else's path. Yeah? We go on our own path, and that's what this light of truth is here to remind us of as well. We follow our own path and allow others to follow theirs. This is all allowing. Yeah? The intentional life is one of allowing. And sometimes it's important to slow down. Sometimes it's important to be quiet. And sometimes it's important to really listen. Listen. Be quiet. So meditation is helpful, certainly. But not only meditation. A walk, I mean, meditation. Not only the meditation that looks like sitting on a cushion um, by yourself, perhaps in the dark, perhaps in the light, perhaps in front of something, perhaps not. That kind of meditation is something I do, and I, I recommend it to other people as well. But not only that kind of meditation, yeah? The quiet, soft, slow movement of feet in a forest. Not hiking to get your steps in, but walking or standing quietly out in nature. That's a kind of meditation as well. There are so many kinds of meditation. And some of them are still, and some of them are mobile, but slow, deliberate, mindful, experiencing every movement fully, in quiet, 
and stillness. There can be a stillness in movement as well. If you've ever done walking meditation, you will understand that. There can be stillness in movement as well. Because actually, there is no absolute stillness. We are all moving. Even when we're sitting on our cushions in our rooms, we are moving at immense speeds through this universe and around an axis on a planet and around a star called the sun and again around a galaxy all of that spinning around spinning and around spinning there is no stillness in this universe however we can find stillness in movement if that makes sense so that's what this card is here to remind us of. Once we've gotten clear of all of the stuff, by water washing things away, clearing out space, rising above the details and getting a broader perspective, we can feel the light of truth and we can move and walk in our truth. We can express and live our truth. We can be authentic with ourselves and others. And then we can hear the voice from within that is speaking truth to us so much more clearly and so much more accurately and so much more lovingly and joyfully and playfully. This is a wonderful beginning to the spread, I believe. We have four questions to ask of this spread. Let's take a look at that first question. The first question is, what am I attracted to? And honestly, when these two cards appeared in response to that question, I was taken aback. I was startled. We have the Her Hierophant and the Eight of Cups. Now, the Eight of Cups is one of the least happy cards in the deck. It's not the most negative looking card by far. It's not the most, but it's in that direction. Yeah, it's on that end of the spectrum. So what am I attracted to? The Eight of Cups. That, took, that takes a little bit of a working around in my brain. But then there was also the Hierophant. And probably you already know, but a lot of tarot readers have a, a not so happy relationship with the Hierophant card. And this card was so unsettling, perhaps, especially in answer to this question, that I used it as my springboard for my second video of the week. Now, perhaps you already know this, but every week after I do this larger spread, I pull one question out of this spread and use Terre de Marseille to answer that question. And this week, I decided to pull out the Hierophant and ask, what the heck does the Hierophant have to do with um, discovering truth and getting a bird's eye view? So, if you want to see that video, it will be up in about 24 hours after this one goes live, well not live, but goes up and is visible on YouTube. So, there is that. But there will be that in just a little while. But first, let's answer this question. What am I attracted to? And the first thing we have is the Hierophant. What does that mean? Well, so the Hierophant for a lot of people means conformity, conventionalism, institutionalism, and those are the better meanings of the card. Some people see it as dogma and restrictions and um, uh, Things like the Inquisition even. I mean, some people read this card very negatively and have a very negative reaction to the authority, the spiritual authority, which they see in this card. And that's one way of reading it. I'm not saying that, no, you, shouldn't, no should, you should never read the card that way. That can be part of it. But it's not all of it. It is not all of it by any means. So for the Hierophant. What does it also mean for me? And especially in this question of what am I attracted to? I'm not attracted to conformity, not in this spread. This spread is not about conforming to anybody else's beliefs or truths or paths. Yeah, this spread is about 
following our own hearts and washing all the crap away from us and healing and getting to the truth and getting a bird's eye view, right? None of that is conformity or conventionalism or institutionalism. However, the Hierophant is also spiritual wisdom. That is the foundation, I believe, of this card. The other parts of, of authority, I think, are things that are slapped on top of that because of the Pope figure. But remember, the Pope figure, traditionally, and when I say traditionally, I'm not just speaking of when the Tarot de Marseille or all Tarot began in the West, um, around the 15th century, the yeah, 1400s. But even before that, when I say traditionally the Pope, I'm talking to like 400 BC, not BC, AD, 400 AD. Yeah? We're talking the beginning of the Middle Ages, the very beginning of the Middle Ages and very late antiquity, the beginning of the Pope. This figure was actually the one who took care of the community and had the spiritual wisdom and was there to feed and foster and help the people who were suffering because the structure of the empire had collapsed or was collapsing. Now, the popes took over care of the city of Rome, for example, took care of the poor, the needy, gave clothes to the naked and the poor, fed the orphans and the widows, did the charitable work with the Pope and then the priests and bishops and all of those people were doing charity at the time. And that's where this comes from. Spiritual wisdom. The spiritual wisdom of what the Pope was intended to be as a figure in a religious tradition. And also tradition. Also tradition. We all have our traditions. Now, this Pope comes from the Roman Catholic tradition. Yes. However, each one of us who have a spiritual tradition, this card is a representative of that as well. Whether it is a shamanistic tradi tradition, yeah, the one who was your spiritual teacher, your spiritual guide in your path, whether that person was in a body or not. That's what this card represents. Whether it is um, an ima, iman, in the Muslim tradition, whether it was a yogi in a Hindu tradition, yeah, the one who teaches us the spiritual traditions that we are walking, that's what this card represents be it Hindu or Wicca, we all learn from somebody. We learn from our tradition, however old it is, or whether it's been recreated in the modern era. Now, there are wisdom teachers, and that's what this card represents, and that's what I am attracted to. I'm attracted to the ones who will teach me, who will guide me in the tradition I choose to follow. And I'm attracted to being that for others. Because when I listen to my truth, when I am standing in the light of my truth, or walking or running in the light of my truth, when I am moving in the light of my truth, I can be the hierophant for others as well. And it's about my beliefs, what I believe about being an eternal being in a human existence whether it be a religious belief, a spiritual belief, all of that is part of this Hierophant card as a balance or as a partner to the High Priestess card or La Papesse in Terre de Masse. Yeah? The, let's, we're sticking in right away at Smith for now. Yeah? The partner is, for me, the High Priestess, which is our own inner knowing, our own spiritual understanding, the knowledge that comes from within, from the, from the depths of the oceans of our unconscious. Yeah? That 
deep wisdom that we all carry with us and have connection to. That's the high priestess card for me. The hierophant is the wisdom that comes from without, from the apparent outside, yeah? from traditions, from teachers, from experiences in the world. Not from my memories, but from the actual experience in the world. Now, they're both ends of a broad spectrum. Now, they're pointing towards directions on a long spectrum. Spectrum, yeah? The high priestess points in this direction, and the hierophant points in this direction. It's all one thing. And both directions, there are no ends to these spectrums, both directions of these spectrums, of this spectrum, are equally important and beneficial and teach us, and they, we grow from them and with them and within them. So this card is here to remind us that, yes, we've got that inner light of truth from within, which we got from that oracle card, but I'm also attracted to the knowledge of tradition, the knowledge of spiritual wisdom that I can receive from others and from living in the world. And then I got the Eight of Cups right next to it. And you'll notice that the Eight of Cups guy is walking away. Because, remember, in all of that learning that we do, in all of that learning that we do, in all of that learning that we do, there will be some things that we want to carry with us, and there will be things that we want to walk away from. The Eight of Cups is the card of sometimes disappointment and abandonment. And sometimes we are disappointed with our spiritual teaching. Now, sometimes we're disappointed by our mentors and our masters and our teachers you know, on the spiritual path. There are times when we're dis disappointed and it's time to walk away from them and perhaps find somebody else or become that for ourselves. And sometimes there are elements of that spiritual tradition that we want to abandon, not abandonment, not being abandoned, but that we want to let go, let fall into the past. We want to withdraw from certain elements of the spiritual traditions that we are walking in, because not all of it is going to be a good match for our inner truth. And we want to be able to allow some of that to fall into the past to detach from it, not to fight against it, not to make it change, but to walk away from it, allow it to fall into the distance. Because the Eight of Cups is also a spiritual journey card. You know, we're all on that spiritual journey, that emotionally spiritual journey. The Cups are emotions, they're the heart, they're love, but they're also spirit. Not the, not the fire of spirit, but the water of spirit the intuition of spirit, the deep well of spirit. And on that spiritual journey, on that watery journey, we want to let some of it wash away into the past. And I'm also attracted to that. I'm attracted to allowing things fall away that are no longer serving me on the spiritual path as well. So I'm attracted to my spiritual journey, I think is what these two cards are here telling us. Now, though we have that we, the stuff that we learn, that we gather, that we draw in, the teaching, and then the processing and allowing that which no longer serves us to fall into the past. Because we are able to let go, to declutter, to be able to make room for more growth. Which we were reminded of in the first three cards of this spread, right? This is interesting. This is a really interesting spread. And as we allow that to, we allow ourselves to declutter, as we allow ourselves to move beyond and let flow past, we have this wonderful next question. Let's take a look at that. This next question is, what can I receive more fully? Which is perfect. We have allowed some stuff to slip into the past. So what can we receive more fully? 
and the answers to this question are beautiful. First one is the world. The next is the Ace of Wands. Both of these relate very beautifully together, I believe. And you'll notice in the um, world card, we've got a figure, a very traditional world card, very similar to uh, Pamela Coleman Smith's drawing of the world card, but a little bit more zoomed in. So the four figures around the wreath look larger. Now the, the lion, the, the bull, the eagle, which is Scorpio, and the water bearer, the, the human figure on the, in the four corners, the evangelists or the seraphim, the four cardinal um, directions or the four fixed signs of the zodiac. So those things <laughs> are bigger. And then we've got the figure in the center. And you'll notice that the figure in the center is holding things in their hands. What are those things? Those things are ta -ta -ta -ta, wands, right? So the wands and this figure in the center go read together beautifully. And in the world card, what do we get? Fulfillment, consummation. I'm ready to receive more fully my own fulfillment. I'm ready to receive more fully my accomplishment and my completion. Every moment we are completing something. Whether we're aware of it or not, we are completing something. We're completing one more step on our journey. Whether it looks like a completion or not. And sometimes that completion looks like a beginning. Right? Those beginnings are actually kinds of completions of something that came before. So the world card is also integration. Yeah? It's that you finish something and you integrate the experience into yourself, into your being, is the world card as well. And you see the world card is a figure in this oval, which is something like an Orphic egg. It's the beginning. It's the end, and it's also the beginning. It's the forming of a new egg that's ready to burst forth with new life. The egg is formed. There's a completion. We've reached a new stage of completion, ready for a cracking open and a new baby chick to be born. And I'm saying chick, I mean like a like a hen, chick, a chicken chick. <laughs> I'm, okay, there's another way to read chick, and I don't want to go there. What we're talking about here is like a bird's egg and a new chick being born. So this masterpiece that we are, I'm ready to receive that. The egg is a masterpiece. The omphalos, the cosmic egg, is a masterpiece. But it's not the end. It's ready for a new beginning. To crack open and reveal itself and begin a new path. And we're ready. We can receive that more fully. And as we begin that, as we look at that new beginning, as we look at that cosmic egg, ready to crack open to reveal a new life, we have the Ace of Wands. We have the beginning of a new suit. The beginning, inspiration to do, to create, the fire of the spiritual fire, but the fire of cre creation as well. New opportunities to do, to become, to create self, to grow as a human being. And our potential, it's the beginning and the potential for the new direction that we're heading in, or the con new continuation of the direction that we're heading in. Now, a new direction is not always, well, I'm going this way, and now the new direction, I'm going that way, or I'm going that way, or I'm going that way, or I'm going that way. But the new direction can be a continuation as well. Now, we begin a new journey in the same direction. The river isn't always turning, cutting off to the right or the left or up or down. Yeah? The river can continue straight, and that can be a new beginning as well. So that's what these two things are here to remind us of. Completions and beginnings, and we're here, and we can receive them more fully.
every moment of every day because we've allowed ourselves to be clear, to get a broad perspective, be present in the now, the ever-present completion beginning of the now, in the light of truth, from within and from spirit. And now we have the third question. A very interesting question. Something we can learn from. Let's take a look at it. So this question is, what am I learning? Perfect question, right? Now, after we've gone through those beginnings and ends, what am I learning from all of this? And we've got two very good answers to this question. The first is the Page of Swords, and the second is the Four of Pentacles. And you'll notice that the Page of Swords is facing the Four of Pentacles. Wonderful, wonderful placement. Page of Swords, a very zoomed in, Morgan Greer Page of Swords. Yeah. Looking very calm. Now this page looks very calm, holding their sword. Looking out into the distance with pretty clear vision. At least that's the way it looks to me. Does it look that way to you? Yeah. In the Rider Waite Smith, in um, Pamela Coleman Smith's version of the Page of Swords, we see a, a young, a youth um, in the wind with the sword raised up and ready to strike and looking a little bit perhaps either defensive or perhaps they're practicing, we don't particularly know, but not looking very calm, yeah? They look poised and ready to do. This page looks a little bit more settled and a little bit more forward-looking. They look more direct, more able to truly see what's in front of them. So, Page of Swords, who is that? This is a card of new ideas and curiosity. And that's what we're learning. We're learning to become that, I believe. We're learning to be the ever, the ever present, eternal novice, the eternal what do we call that? The um, beginner mind. We, we're learning to retain our beginner minds. The new of new ideas, of curiosity, not having decided that we know it all, but that we're always, I'm learning that I'm ready to learn. Right? That's what being able to clear away what we think we know now, clearing away metal, mental space as well as the heart space and spiritual space. We want to clear away the mental space in that first, in those first three cards, those oracle cards. We want to clear away the mental space as well. And as we clear away the debris in our mental space, we can realize that we, and we can learn that we are ready to learn more. The thirst for knowledge is the page of swords, wanting to know. Not only curiosity, but having a thirst for that knowledge. And finding new ways of communicating, new ways of saying what we think we already know, new ways of speaking the truth that we hear coming from within us. And this card can also be ambitious. Um, the page of sword, in a page of swords kind of way. Now, what does that mean? The Page of Swords can be ambitious, but not in the same way as perhaps like the, the Knight of Swords or the Knight of Wands can be ambitious. Now, it's a Page of Swords kind of ambition of, of excitement of the newness and wanting to learn and wanting to explore and that kind of ambition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do all these wonderful things in my life because I'm... I have space to, to receive. I have space to grow, to expand. And I want to do that. That kind of ambition. Not the ambition to write out and conquer. Not that kind of ambition. The ambition to, to grow and expand and develop and become and learn. The Page of Swords kind of ambition. So, we, what am I learning? I'm learning that I am naturally a page of swords. 
facing off or facing off. I'm sorry, not facing off with. This isn't antagonistically. Um, this isn't an, anti an antagonistic relationship. This is the Page of Swords facing the Four of Pentacles, which can often be a very negative card for most people. The miser card, yeah? The Scrooge card. Mine, 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 mine. Get away, get away, get away. It's mine, 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 mine. You, my precious, my precious. The Gollum card from uh, Gollum from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. It's the card of control, wanting to control stuff. But there are some less negative ways of approaching this card. Even if you don't go completely for stability, element, earth, stable resources, which is part of that, this card as well. But even if we just look at the Four of Pentacles from a Rider Waite Smith tradition, there's also saving money, security, conservatism. Not conservatism as like political conservatism, but conserving, conserving resources. Yeah? Conservation of natural wildlife is the Four of Pentacles. Conservation of endangered species is Four of Pentacles. That kind of conservation, conservatism, con conserving the resources that are here. And frugality, not wildly extravagantly spending things in a, in a somewhat negative way, but frugally, using what we can, using what we feel comfortable in using, and then letting the rest be conserved. That kind of balanced frugality. Not the frugality of fear, but the frugality of, I don't need to go crazy. I know there are plenty of resources here available to me, and I will spend what I want to spend, and I will save the rest. I don't have to go crazy. That thing I want, I don't need to get it now. I can get it later when I actually need it. And I don't need to spend everything, get rid of all my money because it's here and it's burning a hole in my pocket. Now that's the opposite of a Four of Pentacles card and also negative. But that kind of frugality, I spend what I need to spend and I save the rest. So I can learn to do that. The Page of Swords can lack some stability, can lack some frugality, can lack some security. So the Page of Swords is also learning to be stable as well in that beginner mind. And these cards together, I think, is, show a beautiful way of being in the world. Not the Scrooge, not the crazy, gotta learn, gotta learn, gotta learn, but the one in between that is balanced between both of these. Incorporating both. That's what I'm learning. In the light of truth. We have a fourth question. Let's look at that. So the question here is, what's the easier way? And before we get into that, let's give a brief overview of where we have come, how we have gotten to this question. We started off with the three oracle cards, which told us to, one, wash away the crap, declutter our lives in all areas, mental, spiritual, uh, emotional, physical. Clear out the wounds so we can heal. And rise up above the details from time to time to get a broad picture, a deep picture of where we are and where we're going. And if we do that, we can fully experience the light of truth from within and from without, from the divine. And we can listen, we can hear the true voice from within instead of the scared voice in the dark. And we can follow that light, that, that light. Yes, we can follow that light. We can see our North Star if we have decluttered and cleansed and risen above the monk. So then we went into what am I attracted to? I'm attracted to receiving spiritual wisdom, to learning from traditions. 
and letting what doesn't serve me go because we're constantly doing that cleaning, right? And letting that go into the past as I move forward on my spiritual journey. And then, so what can I receive? I've got space. What can I receive? I can receive the ever-present moment of that Orphic egg of completion and new beginnings. Yeah? The world and the Ace of Wands. Completion and new beginnings. Fulfillment and potential. Constantly, ever-present together. So what, and so what am I learning? I'm learning to beginner mind. I'm learning I can inhabit my beginner mind more, at least, if not 100% of the time. And at the same time, be the beginner mind in a stable environment. So now, what is the easier way? How do I get there? And we've got beautiful answers here. We've got justice and the four of wands. Justice is da, 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 justice. Justice means justice. We want to live justly. In the light of truth, there is justice. So if we're here experiencing the light of truth from within and from without, we will naturally be in justice. And we have to be careful. Be in justice, not Injustice, right? We have to be in the state of justice. We'll also be in truth, which is also justice. Well, we want to live in our truth, live from our truth. That's the justice card. That's the easier, believe it or not, that is the easier way. It's the card of equilibrium, fairness, equity. That equilibrium of page of swords and four of pentacles. The equilibrium of the world and the ace of wands. Completions and beginnings. Curiosity, newness, freshness, and stability. Conservatism. That balance. That is the easier way. And also the four of wands, another wands card. And you notice we had one cup, one sword, one pentacle, and two wands. So we had a nice balance of elements here, but a little bit more on the wands. Not overly tipped towards the wands, but a little bit more of the wands. And this four of wands is a card of celebration. It's a card of joy, harmony, and relaxation. Once I've cleared away all the crap, and I keep saying crap this, this video, I'm very sorry, but that's the word I've landed on, apparently. When I, once I've washed away all of that crap, um, and I'm, I've ex revealed the light of truth, there's a relaxation in that. Because we're no longer carrying all that extra stuff, that extra crap with us. We've cleansed ourselves, we've washed away our sins, our sins, our toxins, all of that stuff, we've washed away and we can relax now. As we rise above as a bird, getting a bird's eye view, we relax in that position. It's a card of homecoming. And here I think it means homecoming to self. We come home to ourselves. That's the easier way. Instead of living our personas, living the roles we think we need to fulfill, come home to ourselves and our, our truth. And there's a prosperity in that. There's a recognition of the abundance of the universe that we are living in, in that four of wands. And that's the easier way. We live in balance and we enjoy, we relax into the moment and celebrate the moment. That's the easier way. That's the way to live. And we can do that in the light of our truth, living the truth from within, following the voice forward rather than struggling to find it, hearing the voice and following it. That's the easier way. Does that make sense? Isn't this a wonderful journey that this, this spread has taken us through? 
Friends, I hope you're still with us, and I hope that this has meant something for you. And if it has, hit that like button so I hear from you, so I hear you. And it also helps the channel, just in case you didn't know that. Those little thumbs ups help the channel. And um, hit the alarm bell. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe and hit the alarm bell so you get notifications of when I upload videos. I do about two, at least two a week. Um, and share this with anybody who you think might get benefit from this discussion and comment below. I would really love for, to hear from you. What about this makes sense to you? What about it does not make sense to you? What would you want more clarification on? What question would you draw from this spread? I'd be interested to know that too. What, what kinds of questions are you interested in exploring? And friends, if you're interested in a reading, a personal reading, I'll have a link below so you can go over to Instagram and hit, send me a direct message. We can work it out. We'll find out a way for you to get a reading from me. Um, remember, in just a moment, there will be a short clip that gives you the information about these cards, these decks. And friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.